enjoy the gratitude that the people show when they pick a painting and it's framed. They're so happy. I like the outdoors, the um, mountains, the water, mm -hmm. trees, land, landscapes, and um, I get the satisfaction that I do uh, from painting it. Yeah. And I hope the, the uh, enjoyment I have in doing it is reflected in the customer who buys it. What could we say to them to kind of motivate them to pursue their passion or interest and not just, you know, stick with what they're doing in life and just doing one thing? How can we get them to, you know, move forward with the things that they love to do? For people, mm -hmm. they're buying a new car, they don't know who made it. They're buying clothing, they don't know who made it. But here's a painting, they've met the artist, they know who he is, and that's something that'll lack forever. It's more, it's more than a painting, right? More than a painting. Yeah. It's an experience. Yes. Hello everybody, welcome to Vibing Out with Texany. I'm your host with the most Texany, AKA Mr. World Vibe. What we have here is a guest podcast. We have special guests in the house. Please give a warm welcome to my grandfather, my gramps. This is Dick Sanders and he paints. So we're gonna talk all about his painting career, what led up to this and then the painting process. And we'll just talk all about you know what you do and your business because he, he also sells his paintings so we'll go all into that uh, you many guys that know me obviously might know my grandfather uh, but for the for those who don't you'll learn about him today in this episode so welcome how are you doing today thank you nice to be here nice to meet you <laughs> okay a lot of people are going to learn about what you do in your paintings here we have a few here that people can see and why don't we just start with kind of what got you but before the painting process, before you started painting, you know, you've worked all your life before getting into this uh, career, this, this avenue. So what kind of avenues did you, just, did you explore leading up to painting? What avenues did you explore before? Well, my um, working career, main working career, mm -hmm. um, uh, and I was faced with retirement at the end, approximately 65 years. And I had traveled in the States, in Europe, on behalf of several um, customers, manufacturers, and I never really got into painting until after retirement. Mm. The biggest reason, I guess I could say, is the after retirement jobs that I took because I still felt I needed a challenge and wanted to work rather than stay at home. One of the main areas leading up to painting mm -hmm. was my um, employment by the Thomas Kincaid people in California yep. and I was the sales manager in Canada and I would say if you questioned, if you asked me what was the immediate thing that got you into painting, mm -hmm. I would have to say association with and representing for Thomas Kincaid. Mm -hmm. And I was up till then in marketing and sales. Yes. And I enjoyed moving products and that included the, uh, as I said, Kincaid product line. But another area which wasn't as big initially was the framing manufacturing that I also got into. Yep. I became a framing a consultant with several framing manufacturers in Canada. I represented, represented the, uh, framing products uh, through retailers and the retail 
uh, side of things is very important in framing, in not only framing, but in the whole art package and presentation. And I keyed on oil painting only, and that way I was able to get a maximum contribution from them. I don't use uh, other mediums, and um, some people ask me, why do you use oil? I, oil, the big thing about oil is it's, it's a medium that offers the opportunity to cover up, as they say, some uh, minor things that are pa stop a painting from being mm -hmm. a more useful and enjoyable product. Yes. And um, unlike the water type. Water-based. Pro water-based products. Yeah. yeah. They dry fast and uh, you can't do anything with them. You have to change right painting over them with the oil. You can stay with the product, the picture, and change much more uh, even, e much more rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, at the beginning of my painting's mm -hmm. lifestyle, I needed time to improve on the paintings. To learn how to use oil paintings? To learn how to right. use the paint and make oil mm -hmm. the uh, master aspect of my paintings, which they are now. The paintings, and you will see that the three paintings here mm -hmm. all are framed. And I put a lot of effort into um, acquiring frames yeah. and the proper color of frames. Pairing the frame with the with the painting itself. Yes, it's yeah. a very important important because um, that means that if you buy an unframed painting, then you go to a framing store. The framing stores are in the business of selling frames. So they'll sell you any frame they want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I provide the frame and the painting together, so that the customer buys the painting the painting and it already has the proper frame uh, surrounding the painting. Ooh, not to mention, it's got, it's ready to be hung. Oh yes, right. I forgot. You can it's hang them right away. a minor away. thing, not really. I uh, put hanging wire on every painting mm -hmm. and um, at the right side, of, uh, for the right size for the product, yep. it's, um, like the present ones are two by three, the smaller ones are nine by twelves. Yes. So there's a difference in hanging. Obviously, you don't need a lot, as much wire to hang it, but it should be. Uh, I use proper one third down from the top of the frame. Yes. That's when the uh, wire is put on, where the wire is put on the back. Yeah. So it's so it's all part of the process in terms of learning how to do oil paint. How to do oil painting, then the proper pairing with the frame, the wiring, or making sure that it's ready to be hung, and then that's delivered to the recipient so they can just take it and then put it on their wall and basically have it set up right away. And I found that has been quite uh, effective when we have a show outside, plein air show, let's mm -hmm. call that. Mm -hmm. And I have it uh, every summer into the early fall. and. When, I, when a customer chooses a painting, I can tell them mm -hmm. um, that this painting is ready to hang. Yes. You don't need yeah. to uh, be anxious over what size and what kind of a frame, because um, a large frame like this one here, some people might buy a one-inch frame because it's less expensive, but you can't have a large painting with a miniature frame. Right, you don't want them to have to worry about all the stuff after they buy a painting. It's already finished, it's already ready to go. And it, and it, but it's going in the right direction because the yeah. frame has been sought out for the purchaser yeah. to be the right size yeah. and also um, the color is important. And it's a small thing to some people, but when they go out and try and frame it, get a frame Oh, job, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to do. But it costs a lot more. Yeah, than, yeah. Um, I acquire frames with my frame experience, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. I acquire frames at a most modern price, so I don't have a large figure to pass on to the customer. Yeah. So
so they're they're in a win-win situation, and I enjoy um, enjoy the gratitude that the people show when they pick a painting and it's framed. They're so happy, and as someone who's been in customer relations for so many years before retiring, mm -hmm. I realize that a happy paint recipient will be back to buy further paintings. Exactly. Yeah. Or maybe they'll tell someone and they'll, you get a referral, but you know, you, when you get a sale, when you get business, if there's good customer relations, it leads to more business. Exactly. Ultimately. That's yeah. a basic, you yeah. learn any sales and marketing course I've had on the scholastic side mm -hmm. after um, graduation from university as a BA and I also had CAAP after my name as well which uh, came from the idea that uh, advertising agencies wanted a specialist and that's what I was um, brought aboard to in that industry before the framing, before the painting, I actually um, taught in a local college mm -hmm. to um, graduate students and um, I picked um, framing and some art to be an example, but I emphasized from my experience, as you just said, customers who are satisfied will return. Yes. Whether that's coffee chains or paint stores or art galleries. Or driving. Or driving. <laughs> they will come back if yes. they're satisfied and that's yeah. what you want mm -hmm. in a customer. Okay, so to sum up what we were talking about, how you got into painting, everything that led up to it, you had these sales and marketing history, even teaching the course on, on sales and marketing then working for Thomas Kincaid, which is a very famous late painter, and learning about framing, these three things brought you to this point where you're able to learn about framing a painting, painting as well, and then being able to actually go out and sell them and market them and create customer relations so you can get your paintings out to recipients. So these three things were kind of all happening one by one as they needed to, to get you to this point, right? Right. And, and all the co I, I address all the components mm -hmm. of a painting product, not like some people say, well, uh, they buy a painting and the salesperson says, yeah, you can go to the next nearest framing store, they'll be happy to get you a frame. Well, the artist, which in this case, in this case was myself, mm -hmm. I know what's going to help the painting the most and the framing is a large component, often overlooked, look, but very, very important. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people will see what you're doing, painting, loving what you do, and also being able to you know, profit from selling and selling your paintings to recipients, to customers. People will see what you're doing and they'll say, you know, look at this person who who's loves what they do. How did they get to this point? So I'm curious, if you remember the very first moment that you decided, like, I'm going to try painting. Do you remember that first painting you did or that moment where you said, you know what, let me just try painting this first time. You, I'm sure you didn't have, maybe you didn't have an easel. Like, do you remember that, that time when you decided, let me, let me just try this? Do you remember that moment or kind of what that time was like? There wasn't a particular moment to say single out. Yeah. I told you earlier mm -hmm. that I picked out the oil as the medium mm -hmm. for the reasons that I mentioned. Yeah. And um, people like the decor aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I of course improved hopefully uh, in all my painting. Yeah. I actually I think the other day I figured out I've been painting for 18 years. 18 years. And so in that time, I did pick up a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I have a myriad of books in my library. Mm -hmm. As I suggested earlier, I follow YouTube quite religiously. Yep, yep. And, and the artists I pick out on the um, 
YouTube, they're world renowned. Oh yeah, yeah. And they've even said they don't mind people copying their work because it's excellent work. And yep. since the painting I do, like are all originals, I don't have copies of these. They're all original art. Mm -hmm. And um, the YouTube artists I was referring to had suggested that um, they don't mind. Some of them don't address the subject the same way. They don't like other people copying their work. And I can understand that. And these same artists have told me that uh, if I paint, do a painting and I'm not happy with it, mm -hmm. just to paint over it and pick another subject. Oh yeah, so, so there you go. Yeah. that's utilizing the main base. In this case, it's canvas. And um, I think I should have mentioned earlier. Yes. I, I work with canvas or hardboard. Right, two different medium or like um, two surfaces, right? Surfaces and yeah. um, the uh, because f uh, frames also there are in the manufacturing business there are twelve sizes of canvas standard sizes standard sizes yeah twelve of them mm. like four by six eight by ten sixteen by twenty and so on so if I was in acquiring a, a frame that was a 19 and an eighth by 17 and two quarters ah. I could not use a canvas because there aren't no. any yeah. that size so that relegates me to picking the board mm. because it's what goes on the board you can cut the board on and the you canvas can, right that's what the customer sees mm -hmm. and they don't really know or don't question the, the, the size difference. yeah yes um, Suggest I saw a picture or really liked it, and uh, they've never mentioned the size if they like it. So um, that's important mm -hmm. to know the sources and their canvas yeah. and hardboard. Yeah. Okay. So many people now know about the framing and why why you chose to frame all your all your paintings. How you have to choose the frame, and it's a very it's a process. You don't just throw a frame on. You have to choose the right frame and have the knowledge and experience. And now people know that you know you you choose to use oil paintings on either canvas or board. But I think one pe one thing people might recognize and see like the similarities with these paintings is that they're all landscapes. So why don't we talk about why you chose to specifically focus on doing landscapes because. People don't just do it. They, people don't just paint anything they want. Everyone usually has a niche, like their one focus. Good. And yours is clear here. It's it's landscape. So why why did you choose landscapes? Well, um, it's probably by the method of elimination. Mm -hmm. I didn't really try portraits uh, and that sort of thing. I liked landscapes from the start. Yeah. I liked the outdoors, the um, mountains. The water, mm -hmm. trees, land, landscapes, and um, I get the satisfaction that I do uh, from painting it. Yeah. And I hope the the uh, enjoyment I have in doing it is reflected in the customer who buys it. Right. Because if they have the same feeling as I do doing the painting, then they'll be very pleased, and they'll go on for further landscape paintings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Landscape is not the only source of direction of painting, but it's the one I like. I've always liked it, and uh, I will continue with um, oh, yeah, for sure. the landscapes. Yeah, good, because I, I, want, I want people to see the painting and kind of know the decisions that go that go on to creating the type of work that you that we have here that we see here from the large ones to the small ones we have different sizes so so what you have different so you have the large paintings and you have the smaller paintings so why do you go through different sizes too what's the benefit of having small ones versus like large paintings well first of all the small ones that they're here today are mm -hmm. just a sample of um many artists again on the youtube mm -hmm. say you must not have a small painting, you can't have a lot of detail. There isn't the room. 
mm. as the big one, like two feet by three feet. Right. You can have the mountains and the trees and water. And, right. But in the smaller paintings, you have to be careful, especially the colors, because there isn't enough room for too many different co different yes. colors. Yes. And um, but the you can really see how the painting ties in with the smaller frames. Mm. And I have acquired enough smaller frames to provide uh, pleasing uh, images on a painting that size. Yep. And have the enjoyment of doing a large painting with water, for example. Some of the water could be the same size as a whole frame. But you have to go, and many expert artists will tell you, mm. you have to not try and have too much in a smaller painting. Yeah. Don't over like, crowd it, crowding up the, right. the space. Right. It makes sense. It makes sense. It's just like having a small room versus a big room. In a big room, like this room where now you can put lots of, there's chairs, sofas. If it was a small room, you'd keep it simpler. Exactly. Right. Okay. Right. And, and, the, and the customer, the recipient of a painting with the proper frame, as we alluded to earlier, it's more, it's almost more difficult to paint a smaller picture mm -hmm. and get the right um, directions of which where it's going and it's more difficult when you had the freedom of a large painting yeah and you started with larger ones did, did you not typically not larger than the smaller ones yes yeah. I've added those two uh, more recently in the last year and a half two years yeah um, as I said I can I can acquire frames so that I can uh, cover the cost of putting in a whole new picture each time. Yeah. And um, when I want to make sure these are all originals. They're mm -hmm. not prints. Mm -hmm. A print is something where there's an original and then copies like are run off. Cop yeah, on yeah. A, on a board, on a panel, on something. But these are originals. With the uh, signature? On the bottom. Signature right yeah, hand yeah. side bottom of each picture. Yeah. And um, even the smaller paintings, I very rarely use a small narrow frame. I use it large enough to carry the painting. Yeah. Even though there isn't a lot of detail in it, but it just seems to harmonize uh, and they gather you. Um, combines itself into a good-looking image when you have a frame and it's just um, enlarged greatly when you're doing a larger painting. Mm -hmm. You need a painting that's two or three inch frame. You can't have a half inch frame. No, no, a large. A big painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I make sure that I don't do that Yeah. so that the customers get the best format. Yeah. No, oh, I see that. Hmm. Okay, so so by now people have understood kind of what got you into painting. They understand, when they look at one of your paintings, they'll understand now kind of why you, the difference between the large, the small paintings, they'll understand what type of paint you use, uh, what type of style of painting, landscapes, kind of why you got into that, and the oil versus, I'm uh, sorry, the canvas versus board, how, it, you know, they're, they're interchangeable. You can use whichever that, that fits depending on the frames. I think a lot of people would also be interested in knowing about the process of painting because they can't see you paint right now. So maybe for someone to imagine, how do you sit and paint? Do you do it like at home? Is there like a studio? Do you go places to paint? Like what, what does the painting process look like for you? Well, the process of, I don't get out um, on plein air like many artists do, possibly because our climate doesn't afford Snow. those opportunities. Cold, yeah. But, um, and also, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the paint itself. I use one of the top paints um, because they're the best quality Mm. The brand, like a brand? Uh, like a brand. Mm. Uh, 
the Winsor Newton brand, where you can get cheaper paint, oil paint I'm talking about, from other sources. Hmm. But the uh, it's important to have the top brand, the top paint product, mm -hmm. because it pays off in the end. Yeah. When you can see that it, it uh, and I also prime all my paintings first. I use an acrylic basic color to prime the bare canvas mm -hmm. or the board okay. first because oil covers acrylic, but acrylic doesn't cover oil. So it's got to go on first. Yeah, oil right. has to be, because right. oil, because you couldn't do the reverse. Mm -mm. Oil has to be the secondary from the primary paint. Oil goes over that and stays, but the reverse. Do you have, to, do you have to let it dry first, the, the yes, primer? Yes, I use it. In. For like an hour, like a day? Well, I have, sometimes I have about two paintings on the go. Yeah. At the same time, that means I'll do a sky on one where I'm doing the water and another, and then I get back to back and forth, depending what the other things the painting, the image in, uh, requires, and uh, so that interval that I have mm -hmm. makes a difference, and um, that's the way I function with the uh, prime coat. Yeah. Because the canvas is white, so you have to cover it. And I also do initially somewhat of a um, drawing with a paintbrush. Okay. A drawing right. of the overall uh, image. To start. To start. Mm. And I'm doing trees, for example. Most artists say, not only trees, but most artists say that you should put the darker three paints on first. So maybe like you would have done these trees and the mountain first in this one? The, um... Just as an example. I start usually at the top. Okay. So you do the mountain, get that fledged in there, and end up with the trees in the bottom, because, um... There's no magic that should be three or two trees. Mm -hmm. Depends how large the painting is, if it'll accommodate more, fine. But yes, you put the darker paints on first and uh, follow up with the lighter. The clouds and the water, mm -hmm. right, and the lighter strokes on the on the trees here, right? Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. And then usually paint at home, right? This is your, this is your home easel? Yes, I do. I, I've gone into shows outside and painted in a few of them, mm -hmm. but uh, the logistics of getting there, unwrapping unwrap all the tools yeah. from a vehicle, yeah. painting for a couple of hours, putting it back up, driving back. Um, uh, I'm not 18 or 19 years old anymore, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. but uh, so I'm using the most efficient manner I can find to get the product. I would like to get done for the customer and so um, the drawing and uh, that sort of thing is done initially yeah and if you're outside too if wind is in the problem you know then yeah you, you really have to uh, negotiate around it or stop that day yeah and you said the climate factors you can't obviously have too no. cold or Snow, even rain, right? That's these things would impact your ability to paint in public. And since we're in the northern part of North America, areas like um, the Southwest uh, have almost every day you could be outside painting, except for the odd rain, and you could be doing it down there a lot more relentlessly than we can do it up here. Yeah. Outside, we have to be driven inside at that point. Not that it makes a difference to the product. Um, it's just more convenient, let's say that. But I want to make sure I have a product that's desirable. Mm -hmm. And whether it's done outside or inside, it looks good. They like it, yep. the customer. That's the main thing. Yep, of course.
Okay, so talking about some of the painting process, how you're outside. Well, you're, you'll go outside, and you said in the, in the summer to fall, you'll you'll go outside and you'll do your paintings there. And yeah, I just kind of want to know like how the process of painting. You're talking about how you've you learn a lot from YouTube, but before you took a few courses. How has learning about painting changed over the time? Because I think you said you've painted for 18 years. Mm-hmm. So how has the learning process changed as like technology has advanced and we can learn so many different ways how to you know, learn skills? Well, the, um, I think the way to start that off is to look at the number of uh, YouTube artists that I mm. have seen over the years. Some of them are a completely different mm-hmm. direction um, from another, and that um, direction involves them presenting a product that maybe wouldn't be suitable for down in South America or, or in, a, in, a, in a America per se. And um, but you have to like what you're painting. Yes. That's what I feel. I see something. I see something in several paintings, mm. and I'm not copying them, but I might. There might be one component mm-hmm. um, that, that way, like the way they show the tree, I'd say. And those. The, the biggest improvement, of course, is that painting products are getting um, more, so much more exposure in the last. 15 years. Painting products? For example, paintings um, and the method of distributing them, like the um, computerized. Like digital sales. You know, that sort of thing, exposure. Mm-hmm. Uh, websites. And um, websites um, where people have never seen the actual product, it's all on the internet. Yep. And uh, they can decide, you know, what they like about it, and, um, and then I think that can, the difference I found, and I've been making, I feel, is that it creates an opportunity for the framing. Getting back to that, because mm-hmm. the people mostly show uh, on the computerized approach, um, frameless art. Yeah. So, oh, I like that about art. And then when you actually see it, perceive it, mm-hmm. you have to, uh, you don't have to, but it enhances it if you get it framed. Framed, yeah. So now yeah. you're reply, re- relying on somebody else doing the yeah. framing. Yeah, it's like and extra work to do after you got your painting. But it, you have to marry the frame mm. and the painting together. Color as well. Yeah, yeah. Style. And uh, a lot has changed since the Renaissance and going way back to the, that, um, where they had um, hand-made gold frames, that sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And today they're synthetic, looking like it's gold or looking like it's silver or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I should mention, I really never, never use plastic on my framing, it's usually 90, over 90% wood. Wood, yeah, yeah. Because the fixing plastic with the screws, stuff like that, makes it difficult. Mm-hmm. And um, so I don't need more headaches. I like to make sure that solid wood gives it a value that plastic cannot. Yeah, I see that, yeah, yeah. And even the learning process, I remember when years back you were talking about when you wanted to learn more about painting and you wanted to learn from different artists. I remember years back you would talk about these courses that you wanted to attend. But I remember the, the problem always with these courses were that they were like hundreds of dollars. And they, they would teach you outside somewhere or in, or in a room, but they'd always be like $600, $700 for a course. Whereas now having your iPad, being able to be on YouTube, and like you said, just watching all these different videos every day, you can see how all these different people paint their different styles. You can see that for free. Mm-hmm. So now you're exposed like tenfold, twenty, hundredfold. 
you're, you're exposed to so many new artists and techniques as opposed to having to sit in a room, pay, pay hundreds of dollars just to learn from one guy. And glad you brought that up. I, my first course mm. I took was my last. <laughs> your first was your last, yeah. Um, I t answered an ad or something, mm -hmm. a phone call or whatever it was, Yeah. that they're having a course in two weeks and if I would like to go, it's a beginner's course. Okay. And this is years and years ago, so I thought that would be good, I should get. So I joined this, uh, uh, what you call him a painter instructor, I'm not sure what he was, mm -hmm. but he was the one. So I went to the class the first week, and uh, the emphasis on uh, beginner course. Okay. And people were asking him while they were painting questions like, if the flesh tones had enough on the color below the eyes, things like that, and I had my hand up, and the gentleman who was teaching would go around the room and he'd finally get to me mm. once a night. And then I said, you know, this is not a beginner course. Mm. I expected it to be as it was described thereof. So I don't think I should pursue this any further. Painting or the courses? That, that course. The course, yeah. Okay, and, yeah. And um, as a person who does not give up easily, I decided... I'm going to use other sources for mm. painting mm -hmm. for people who are really what they say they are. And that's what uh, got me out of the beginning course. Yep. I, got a, I checked a lot in books, in libraries. Books, libraries. Bought painting books, how yep. to paint. Yep. And that went along. And then, of course, when the YouTube came along, then I had videos and I could see in detail, yeah. judge for myself, mm -hmm. what was a beginner's course and what was not, and the really course was just showing how to paint, and that's where I um, learned uh, from the point of my own initiative to learn to paint. Yeah, and seeing the video, like that changes everything because painting is something that you see, you need to kind of be there in person to watch the process of it. It's a very it's a process, you know, type of event where you, you, when you see someone do it and they talk and explain things, even like think about like Bob Ross and how people, people might have not known about him the longest time ago, but maybe the younger generation see him on YouTube, right? So they saw, they see the things he was doing there. So people like seeing the process of painting, whether it's about learning a painting or whether it's just seeing somebody do what they love and watching the, you know, watching the thing get finished in front of them, watching the painting be created in, in, their, in front of their own eyes, right? And it's funny you mentioned Bob Ross because yeah. I have a number of uh, YouTube artists now mm -hmm. that from time to time they will mention Bob Ross. Yeah. And they will say, well, this is a Bob Ross special on trees. I wouldn't recommend it, but so and so. And, uh, but he made his name in the art business and did very well and I have to applaud him on that yeah because art is a personal thing mm. and some people like re and landscaping and others do not yep yep some people like portraits um abstract abstract art. yeah that's a big one yeah too um, but i like landscape mm -hmm. i hope other people who buy my paintings feel the same way and i'm there for them for more of that. Yes. Oh yeah. That's basically, that's basically the way I feel because it's very personal. And yeah. you don't know who you're painting for as a single person selected. You're just painting, doing a painting the best you can mm -hmm. and you like and people will eventually gravitate towards the art yeah. that I show now and I enjoy doing it. I hope they have as much uh, fun and experience having one in their home 
Yeah. As much as I enjoy painting it Creating. for them. Yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 really important. So that's all I can think of for now. And and recently you've been able to sell like so many. I feel like having your doing your doing painting plein air, as you said, go painting outside and and having your painting set up, you you have them kind of like gallery style, like you know, on a ledge as you sit and paint live. I think people are very responsive to that because they get to they get to see you in the process of painting, they get to see your finished works, and overall they see somebody who loves what they do and they love to support that. Whether they love the the, the they love the painting itself, whether they love you know you as a person and seeing what you do, but I think people have really gravitated towards that over the past year or so and so you know you get a chance to do that again this year are you looking forward to being outside again and having your paintings in public and being around other people when you paint yes i'm, I'm looking forward to the weather cooperating yes first of all <laughs> yeah yeah and i don't paint as much now live outside because of you as you referred to mm -hmm. the people seem to like the work mm -hmm. and they don't want to hear me talk about it and I certainly am going to do that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they've selected and purchased my That's paint. been big, yeah. And hopefully this from a April, approximately, depending on weather, yep. it starts again where I have a sport in, uh, where I have a, an um, what do you call it, a site. Yes where I appear, let's say Saturday and Sundays, so they know I will be there. Yep, yep. And um, I'm not trying to push things, they're selecting ones they like. Yes, having the selection there for them to choose. Should we let people know where that's going to be, or should they go online and figure that out later? Well, they can, um, at the moment, I will be at the... Burlington Mall, mm -hmm. um, where there's an ex patio set up in front of a Starbucks. Yes, in the mall, yep. And uh, that's where I show, uh, last year that's where I was showing my work, mm -hmm. and I look forward to repeating this year. Yep. Because I have a better feeling of what the people want, so I have smaller ones Yes. For, because they cost less money. And if they're newer people in the market, they like to start out. Yeah. Something, something smaller so they can put in any room. Yeah. And it's, there's no shipping involved. Oh. There's no, no tax involved. Tax. No frame, no, no framing to go get done. <laughs> no. So they pick a, 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 a painting like this for the small ones. Mm -hmm. And they can even buy them over the uh, computer network. We can use Instagram, right? You can, mm -hmm. someone can message you there as well and see your work on Instagram and decide to message you, reach out and say, you know what, I'm looking at this painting, you know, can I purchase this one? So there's mm -hmm. also that online as well. Yeah. 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 So we're making it as easy as possible. Yeah. And uh, instead of jacking it up and putting it in a gallery. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of experienced artists refer to that. Yes, their paintings are marked way up, but the people, especially the times we're in now, they're being charged more and more for basics. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh yeah. I'm making these for paintings, including the, um, the frame, yeah. including the hanging get wire, yeah. ready to go for the prices. Yeah. And they're very. If it's all all in, like everything all in, is yeah. no extras. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's still the same value in terms of amount of paint used, size of the painting, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to get people to. There's a lot of people who aren't familiar with art either. Yeah, and I try to tell them, you know, what these would cost you elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And they're not a print, it's an original art. Mm -hmm. So that's important. With the value, yeah, yeah. And uh, you're talking to the artist who did that. Yeah. You're not going to a 5 and 10 store and grabbing a print. Yeah, yeah. So there's a difference here. 
Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's really important for people, especially people watching, listening. They might be, uh, you know, maybe there's there's someone that works like a regular job, but and but they have a few interests, but they might not they might not have pursued their passions the same way you have, where you've learned about painting and then you've spent you know almost two decades now refining your work and being dedicated and learning and growing in this avenue. So. I think somebody that, that that's listening or watching might just be proud of seeing all the growth you've had in this field. They might be, like I said, they might have a passion or hobby, but they might have not started it or pursued mm-hmm. it as long. So, what could we say to somebody who may, they maybe they're not in the same industry as you, but they do have a passion that they want to pursue? Maybe it will lead them to making money one day, as you're able to do with your paintings. What could we say to them to kind of motivate them to pursue their passion or interest and not just you know stick with what they're doing in life and just doing one thing how can we get them to you know move forward with the things that they love to do well i offer one thing Mm -hmm. i haven't done it in a number of cases but a few i have i have painted people's houses for Mm -hmm. them i don't mean outside painting the walls (laughs) no no yeah i painted two or three houses. One wasn't even finished, it was a cottage up north. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen it, Yeah. so they gave me a picture of it, and Mm -hmm. I created it that way. And you know, one of the things I noticed having my paintings, and there's about 25 paintings will be out at the showing starting probably next month. Yeah. When people are coming in to have their coffee, they see this array of paintings along this edge outside. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much the younger people, and I'm saying really like seven, eight or nine, see the colors and comment to their parents, oh, I love that color, Mm -hmm. isn't it? And the parents are surprised, so they say in their mind, maybe we should take a look at that. Right. Children being affected by colors. Mm Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have thought of that, but it's the setting and it works. They seem to like it. Yeah. Wow. So, so that's so appealing to a certain person's interest, whether it's helping someone paint their own house, like a picture of their house, so a specific interest, or even a like a broad range of of age. So, like appealing to even kids who might not understand the complexity of what goes into a painting, but just, just appreciating. Like they just you know, like the colors and the overall picture. So you can appeal to different audiences and different kind of customers by what you do, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that's important to do, yeah. And the price is considerably less than if you went into a gallery and saw a number Museum of or whatever. Very yeah. good, nice work, <laughs> not, but way higher yeah. Yeah. in price. And I think, unfortunately, today, People are hurting, and this subject, the art, is not a necessary thing before food, for example. Yeah. So I'm trying to make it as affordable as possible so they can enjoy things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we need to enjoy things more these days than we're seeing now. And uh, if I can help, I'm appreciative of that. Well, that's nice. It's great. Any uh, any last thoughts or words that we haven't that we touched on? Any ideas we haven't touched on that 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 come to mind or that you're thinking about before we wrap up here? Um, I guess the biggest thing for people, mm-hmm. they're buying a new car, they don't know who made it. They're buying clothing, they don't know who made it. But here's a painting. They've met the artist, they know who he is, and that's something that'll lack forever. It's more, it's more than a painting, right? More than a painting. Yeah. It's an experience. Yes. It's an excitement to some degree for some of them. Mm-hmm. And they know it's been done, not over the phone, but live by the painter. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's rich. So... And I'm very happy to help anybody who 
likes that form. Yep. That's great. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending some time, you know, letting everyone know about what you do, why you do what you do. And, you know, I think people love to see, like I said, people love to see others pursuing their passions. You're not doing it because you're someone who needs to sell a painting to pay for like your next meal. It's not like you're doing it for the, just to make money. It's you're doing it because you love to do it. And I think people love to see that. And just knowing that you can also do what you love and it will pay off. And, you know, years, sometimes it's decades later, it will pay off by just following what you love to do. I think that's a great message for people. Yeah, you're right. I endorse that 100%. And if I can help anyone, I'm making it as easy as possible to contact me. Nice. Instagram, Dick Sanders Fine Art. Make sure you reach out to him. Or check him out at the Burlington Mall, Starbucks, from you know, spring to spring to fall. When, when the weather cooperates, right. right? Very important. Yes, very important. All right. Well, thanks for being on the on the podcast. Thank you. See you around, and I'll see you guys around too, all right? Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>